Hello there, I'm Luca Ricci and I'm a musician. In the previous lessons, we talked about tonalities, scales, triads, inversions, and seventh chords. In this lesson, we will be harmonizing a short chorale. Let's start by analyzing the chorale. We have an 8 bar long chorale that's written following the rules of common practice instead of the historic Lutheran practice. We're in the key of C major, as you can see by the absence of accidentals at the beginning of the stave, and the presence of a C at the beginning and ending of the piece. Inside the piece, there's a total of four fermatas, which always ends on G and C. There are no apparent modulations, and there will not be, as modulations will be a part of the intermediate course. The best way I've personally found to harmonize a choral is by proceeding from one fermata to the other, analyzing the point of start and the point of end to understand what harmony could be used on the bass. Right here, the first chord is a first grade, a C major chord, made by the notes C, E and G. We have to choose a starting position of the chord, either in close voicing or open voicing. We'll go with an open voicing, since the bass jumps up of a register right at the beginning, permitting us to be more free in the voice movements and less cramped. Now, we'll have to choose a starting position for the soprano, the highest voice. In common practice, it's always best to start with either the root note or the third, never with the fifth. We'll write down the root note and fill in the northern notes, with an E on the contralto and a G on the tenor. Let's start by analyzing the next notes of the bass. We have an F, which is a fourth grade, a G, which is a fifth grade, another G, a C, a D, which is a second grade, and another G. We'll proceed by writing down the melody of the soprano, trying to respect the harmony we've decided to use. Next, we'll fill up the other voices by trying to move them as little as possible, avoiding lips if possible to avoid parallel fifths and octaves, which are considered errors in this practice. This harmonization is technically correct, but we can make it more interesting. First off, in the first G, instead of a fifth grade, we can use a first grade in second inversion, which acts as an appoggiatura that resolves to the next G, which we maintain as a fifth. On the second grade, we can add the seventh to the chord, to make it more spicier. It must be remembered that some particular voices need to resolve in a very specific manner inside of common practice. Sevenths must resolve down a note, while the leading tone must always resolve up a semitone. We will repeat the same process for the next session of the chorale. It must be noted that some teachers say that after fermata there are some licenses to strange movements and jumps, and it's often seen on multiple chorales that after fermata it's possible to maintain the same grade without incurring in an harmonic syncopation, however we will try to avoid it if possible. In harmonizing the second part, we can see that on the 7th grade, the B, I choose to use a 5th grade in first inversion. That is because it's very rare to have a 7th grade in root position, as it may lead to faulty movements and in this particular case the B jumps to a G, which is proof of a change in position of the chord. It's important to remember that in common practice, you don't double the 3rd in the first inversion and the 5th grade, as they lead to parallel octaves and fifths. We will apply the rules mentioned previously to the next section of the chorale, trying to use inversions and seventh when possible.
the next lesson, we conclude this beginner course of music theory, talking about minor scales and tonalities. See ya!